Hi, this is an RTF zone instruction video for the Starmax 90mm F-18 fighter. Um, I've had some people ask me, how do you install that front landing gear? Uh, the front is pretty well the same as the rears. They're not too complicated, uh, but because the instruction manual isn't very good, uh, I thought I'd quickly go over this and show you guys exactly how to do this. Uh, you're going to need four components. The main body, which is pictured here. Uh, the landing gear assembly itself. The uh, servo, obviously, for in installation later. The only thing not pictured here is uh, a bar that will attach from here to the servo that is included in the kit. Um, it's not really necessary for the demonstration. You'll get the idea once I do this. So, first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take the landing gear assembly, which is the retract unit, and install this into the housing, which is going to be already installed in your aircraft. So when you have this, generally you take the, the green plastic piece and with this end facing towards the rear, you're going to secure this into the aircraft uh, really firmly. Uh, use a good five minute epoxy. Uh, you got to make sure that this isn't going to pop out on a rough landing. Um, obviously this gear is not designed for grass landings. It will uh, not really stand up to it all that well, so keep her on the cement or the golf course style um, runways, they're no problem. Uh, belly, belly landed if you, if you need to, if you're going to be flying off of grass. So, first thing we need to do, once you've got this secured in, we're not going to do that now, um, just pretend that it's actually secured in there, is we're going to take the retract unit and we're going to feed, I'm just going to put the camera down so that we can do this. Okay, so, we're going to take the, the retract unit itself and we're going to feed this through so that it fits. And then these two pieces fit together like that. Now there's no difference between installing this in the plane or, or out here. This is just for the camera so that you can see what we're doing. I'm not showing uh, the servo installation that goes right in this spot, which controls the wheel. Left and right, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, contact me if, you're, if you can't figure it out, no problem. Uh, but in this case, we're not going to demonstrate that right now. Just a quick overview. The servo simply just installs upside down here like this, moves left, right, and that actually, of course, turns the wheel left and right. Okay. So, having this installed, we're going to put this through to the back and have the servo in here. So you have this like that. Now, where does this servo go? Well, we're going to flip this over. And the servo goes in exactly like this. Okay. Now, if you want to make it a little bit closer, use a little less bar, just flip your servo arm around, obviously, and you can actually have it installed this way. But it really makes no difference at all. Now, in the kit, there is an, an included bar that will attach from this section here to the, the retract unit, to the servo itself. Uh, use a very good servo and secure that servo in nice and strong. Uh, you, do need, you do need a good servo to operate this. And the result that you end up getting, once everything's installed, that is basically the installation. Servo goes in, arm attaches to the secondary arm. When you gear up, pushes forward. When you gear up, pulls back. That will actually result in the following Bear with me here guys, I'll show you the final result. Okay. So if the servo is actually being pulled, sorry, is if the servo is being pushed, that's gonna raise the gear itself and it locks itself into place. And then when the servo pulls, it brings it down. So gear down, gear up, and that's it. Very simple to install. It's very important though that you do use, like I said, a good quality servo. Uh, your endpoints on your radio, you should set them at 50-50 to start off with and then go from there to make sure that the, the gear will lock in the down and up position so that the servo isn't being too, uh, too pressured. And that's it. The rears install practically the same way as this. Um, you can obviously use a servo slower to make it look a little bit more scale 
and that's all she wrote. Thanks very much. If you have any questions, come on over to www.rtfzone.com. Fire us a message. We're more than happy to help.